How's it going everyone? David from DOD Media. Today I'm going to be showing you how I created this image in Photoshop by using three points of light. I've got my key light, the Aperture 120D, coming through the Godox Octobox with a grid. That's coming down on my face like that, and that's what's giving me this normal looking light. Then down on my right, I've got the newer RGB 480 set to a kind of teal color, and that's lighting from underneath coming up to light this side of my face and neck. And then down here on my left, I have another one of those panels, but this one's putting out a kind of purplish tone. So they're two nice complementing tones, and then the key light that is bringing out my natural skin tone. Now, the whole point of these RGB panels isn't to drive the light, but to give an accent of light. See, I, if I turn off the key light, it just doesn't look nearly as good, right? Because you don't see what my natural skin tone is. It's too dark. And even if I turn those up, it would just be too much color without any kind of natural color in place. So having that key light in there, it really helps just keep things a little bit balanced while giving those accents of tones that we're going to play with. Then I brought the image into Lightroom, applied my Fashion Thing preset, which you can get up there from my store. And then I was ready to bring the photo into Photoshop. I dragged the two icons that I'd made in Illustrator straight into that composition there, just as they were because they're vector files. And then I sized them down to something that I thought would be a little bit more appropriate. Once I had them to the size that I wanted, I went ahead and rasterized those layers so that I could start messing with the blending modes. Now you could also turn them into smart objects and then apply the blending modes to the smart object, but that requires more processing from your computer. And this is quite a quick job, so I didn't think it was necessary. So let's start with Photoshop. We're going to right click, go to blending options and come down to outer glow. When you click it, it'll enable it. Now in Outer Glow, you've got a bunch of options. Make sure that your blending mode is set to Color Dodge. The opacity anywhere from sort of 65 to 100 is gonna work for you because we're gonna be doing this in incremental layers. So let's start on the first glow, the very, very edge glow of that. We want it to be so fine along the letters and the box that it literally looks like that is the edge of a neon. So we're gonna open up our color and just come along to the cheek where we have that source color that we want to select and then bring the luminance and saturation of that way up. Okay, now that just looks bonkers. That looks way too much. So what we're gonna do is make sure that our technique is set to softer and then the spread we're gonna bring way down. Now the spread, if you think of the spread as a sort of feathering, if the spread is way higher, then it's a big block of glow. You don't want that, that looks too harsh. The spread is much lower, the feathering is much higher. So that means that that effect is really just focused on areas where there is a big object in your layer, where there is a big item in your layer. In this case, it's the letters and the surrounding box. But if you were to do this on a cutout of me, for example, um, then I would have a nice glow behind me. So for now, let's bring the spread down to about I don't know, 5%. Make sure the size, the size we want to keep it as nice and big as we can. And then the range, the range here, I like to keep the range close to about 100%, um, maybe sometimes a little less, but 100% tends to just give the most um, satisfying kind of look because quite often it can just be a little bit too harsh. Like here, you can see it's really lumping up that glow within that area where there's a concentration of content. So I'll bring it to maybe, let's go 95. 95 is good. Okay, next up we're going to hit Control or Command J to duplicate that Photoshop layer. And then select the one underneath, select both of the Photoshop layers and hit Control or Command G to group them. It just makes it a little bit easier for organizing it. And we'll call it Photoshop. Now, if you open this down, you've got Photoshop Copy and Photoshop. So this one is going to be the fine glow and this one is gonna be the broad glow. So what we're going to do now is open up the broad glow by double clicking that outer glow option. And now what we're going to do is make the spread much bigger because we want this to be the kind of fall off glow. We don't want it to be that really bright perimeter glow. So let's bring this up and then bring the opacity of it down. Then we want that glow to darken. So we're just going to drag this luminance down a tiny bit, like about there. And then we can bring it back up because it's a darker color. We can bring it back up so that the opacity fits with it again. Okay, something, something like that. Cool. So then just go ahead and repeat that for the Premiere Pro one. Now again, this one's gonna be the outer perimeter. So we'll make that spread really small. All right, then we'll duplicate it, group them together. And then this outer glow on the lower one, we're just gonna make the big, the big honcho glow. 
So if you're happy with that, you can stop right there. But if you're not happy with that, well, this is where we start using additional layers for blending using brushes. So we're gonna create a new layer with shift control N or shift command N to create a new layer. And this new layer, we're gonna place it on top of everything and we'll change the blending mode. Let's try color dodge for now. Then select your brush tool with B on the keyboard or right there. And holding alt or option, you can choose a color with the eyedropper. So we're just gonna select that teal that's in behind the Photoshop. Now we're gonna bring the flow down to like 8% or let's say 10%. Now we're also gonna right click and make sure that the hardness is at 0% so that it is completely feathered out. There's no hard edges on that brush. We're gonna make our brush nice and big and then we're just gonna click. And click a couple of times. What this is gonna do is it's going to add an essential kind of haze to that item that is glowing. It's accentuating that glow in that color. So we'll do the same thing over this side. Alt, we'll pick whip that little purple there. And we'll just add a couple of clicks of purple. That's looking pretty good. Maybe one more purple. All right. Now I can see in the Premiere Pro thing that actually that edge of that glow is, is looking a little bit harsh and actually on the Photoshop one too. So I'm gonna come along to the wider glow and I'm, I'm just gonna make a few tweaks I'm gonna bring the opacity up and bring the spread down a bit, and that should achieve the same effect without creating those kind of edges around it. Okay, that's better. And then let's do the same with the Photoshop layer. So bring the opacity up and just soften that down a little bit more. That's looking pretty good. Let's compare that with the original. So this is the original one that I posted and this is the one that we've just made. Looking pretty good. All right, that's it from me. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it enjoyable. If you did, would you consider subscribing? Give it a thumbs up. Give it a ding, give it a ding. Check out my Instagram at DOD Media where you'll actually find that photo right there. You can also follow me on Twitter at DOD Media as well. And I'll see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>